Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United nil, Watford nil, or Old Trafford. Manchester United have dropped two more points. The top four is now in doubt. Today, Manchester United had numerous chances. Manchester United had 22 shots. Cristiano Ronaldo had his chances today. Ronaldo did hit the post and Ronaldo scored, but it was offside. Ronaldo is not in form at the moment. He played against Atletico Madrid and he was anonymous in that game. Weren't that good against Leeds last weekend. Don't forget he missed a sitter in the first half of that game. The last time Ronaldo scored was the 2-0 win against Brighton. But prior to the Brighton game, he didn't score in his last six. Ronaldo will leave Manchester United in the summer if they fail to finish in the top four. Well, prior to the Leeds game, it said Manchester United will allow Cristiano Ronaldo to leave in the summer. Not so long ago, it said that Ronaldo was set to become Man United's new captain to replace Harry Maguire, but that's not happening this season. Since Ronaldo re-signed, he's scored 15 goals for Man United in all competitions. He's got over 800 goals in his career. Manchester United re-signed Ronaldo last summer for £20 million, with add-ons included. His contract at Manchester United expires next year. There's an option to extend his contract for a further year. He's the highest earner at Man United at the moment. He has won over 30 trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. Uh, today, Bruno Fernandes had chances. He had two very good opportunities in the first half. Bruno Fernandes has been in form in his last few games. Uh, Fernandes did get an assist against Atletico Madrid. Uh, last weekend against Leeds, Fernandez scored a very good header. It was a good cross by Sancho to pick out Fernandez, and he got an assist against Leeds. But Fernandez has enjoyed a lot of poor games this season. He was far superior last season to this season, but he is still one of our best players, and he's certainly one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. Earlier on this season, Fernandez rejected a new contract offer. Bruno Fernandez' contract talks are postponed until the summer. He's under contract with Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further year. But he's been a Manchester United player for two years. Man United got him from Sport in Lisbon back in January 2020. Um, Anthony Elanga, he had a great chance today. The build-up play to that chance was absolutely amazing. I like Anthony Alanga. He's done really well since he broke into our first-team squad. Um, Alanga came off the bench and scored a late equaliser against Atletico Madrid. He scored Manchester United's fourth goal against Leeds last weekend. Don't forget Rangnick said that Anthony Elanga was close to leaving Manchester United. Revert back to earlier on this season, Elanga got racially abused on social media because he missed the decisive penalty against Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. Elanga has been part of the club 
for a long time. You know, came up our academy, joined Manchester United's academy at the age of 12. And now he's 19, so still very young. And he's under contract to Man United until June 2026. There's an option of a third year. Committed his future to the club towards the end of last year. And today, I recall Pogba having some chances. Um, Alex Tellez, um, he had a very good chance from a free kick. Man United were wasteful in front of goal today. Like I mentioned earlier, he said we had 22 shots, but Man United only had, what, two or three shots on target. You know? Uh, Man United as well today could have had, what, two or three penalties. But I'm shocked that we didn't beat Watford because I was expecting Manchester United to beat Watford because Watford are a very poor team. You know, Watford are, what, in the relegation zone? I'm expecting Watford to go down this season. Uh, don't forget Watford beat Manchester United earlier on this season for one. And that was obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's final game in charge as Manchester United manager. Uh, not so long ago, Watford lost 4-1 to Crystal Palace. Uh, Watford's manager is Roy Hodgson. Watford appointed him in last month. Roy Hodgson left Crystal Palace at the end of last season. He's managed a lot of clubs in his managerial career. Roy Hodgson shouldn't be managing now anyway, he's too old. Before Roy Hodgson, Watford had Claudio Ranieri. Watford sacked him earlier on this season and before that, they had Cisco and Watford sacked him. Let me put into the equation that Watford lost Troy Deeney last year. He went to Birmingham from Watford. Uh, they lost Decore. Um, he went to Everton. They lost Quinia and they lost Craig Dawson. Craig Dawson went to West Ham. Uh, today, Watford had around three players missing through injury. But from a Watford perspective, they'll be very delighted with the draw. Uh, Man United had, what, two or three players missing today. Um, Cavani, he's still out with injury. Um, Scott McTominay, um, he was out with illness. And I think that's about it. That's who we've got missing. Uh, today, Lindelof played. I, didn't, I don't think Lindelof did too bad. Obviously, Lindelof was playing as a centre-half today. Lindelof started as a right-back against Atletico Madrid. So he was in an unfamiliar role because Lindelof isn't a right-back, he's predominantly a centre-back. Uh, Varane, you know, he played today as well. He was obviously alongside Lindelof. Um, Harry Maguire uh, didn't play today. I was expecting Maguire to start. Uh, we brought substitutions on in the game today. Uh, Marcus Rashford came on, didn't he? Uh, Jaden Sancho came on. And someone else came on. Uh, Luke Shaw came on, yeah. 
you know, Manchester United's next game is Manchester City, and that's going to be a very difficult game. Ralph Rangnick, he wants the Man United job on a permanent basis. He won't get the Man United job though on a permanent basis. You know, at the moment, Rangnick is Manchester United's interim manager. He's been Manchester United's interim manager for almost three months. Or is it three months now he's been interim manager? He's managed around 17 games in all competitions. He's Man United's interim manager until the end of the season. Then it did say that Rangnick is expected to take up a consultancy role for a further two years. Rangnick has endured one transfer window as Manchester United's interim manager and unfortunately Rangnick did not get backed in the January transfer window. And he actually got promised at the first as well he was going to get backed. Man United endured a very disappointing January transfer window because we didn't make any signings. Uh, we should have let Lingard and Henderson leave last month, but Man United blocked their exits. And we had the incident with Mason Greenwood towards the end of last month. Man United did let around eight players leave last month. In the summer of this year, I am expecting Manchester United to make some signings. Uh, we'll try and sign a midfielder in the summer because when Rangnick first came in, he identified Manchester United's midfield as a weakness. And on the other side of things, I'm expecting a lot of players to depart the club in the summer. In the summer, I reckon Cavani will leave. <clears throat> well, it said earlier on this season that Edison Cavani is expected to leave as a free agent in the summer. It said uh, Cavani prefers a move to La Liga. Cavani's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Manchester United got Cavani on a free transfer from PSG back in the summer of 2020. Uh, Cavani's not available at the moment, like I said, because he's out of injuries. Enjoyed a few injuries since he signed for the club. <coughs> uh, Ronaldo, like I've already said, there's a good chance he'll leave in the summer, especially if Man United failed to finish in the top four. Uh, Lingard, <clears throat> he'll also leave Manchester United in the summer. You know, Lingard is out of contract at Man United in the summer. He has been part of the club for a long time. There is no power academy in that, but he doesn't really get in the team. Uh, Lingard, I think, came on against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League and surprisingly started against Leeds last weekend. Like I mentioned earlier though, Lingard should have left last month. I don't know why we blocked his exit. Last month it was Newcastle and West Ham that were battling it out to get Lingard on loan. Uh, Van der Beek and Martial, I'm expecting them to leave in the summer. At the moment, <clears throat> Van der Beek's out on loan with Everton and Martial's out on loan with Sevilla. One matter, he'll leave Manchester United in the summer. You know, one matter doesn't get in the team. He lost his place in the team a while ago. And he's lost that yard of person he's aging up. But despite all of that, he's had a good career at Manchester United. You know, one matter 
has made around 277 appearances in all competitions and he's scored 51 goals. Matt has been at Manchester United for eight years. So reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. Manchester United got Matt off from Chelsea back in 2014, got him for 37.1 million. Matic, um, he'll leave Manchester United in the summer. You know, Matic isn't one of our first choice midfielders. You know, doesn't really get in the team. But today against Watford, he started alongside Fred in that midfield. Not so long ago, Matic had a shin injury. Matic is out of contract at Man United in the summer. Uh, Matic has been at Manchester United for over four years. We got him from Chelsea back in 2017. Got him for £40 million. Pogba, um, there's a chance that he'll leave Manchester United in the summer. Well, earlier on this season, the Telegraph reported that Pogba is open to Premier League offers if he leaves Manchester United this summer. But earlier on this season, it said Pogba would be open to staying at Man United beyond the end of his contract. He's out of contract at Man United in the summer, is Pogba. Uh, Pogba's done well in a lot of the games he's played in since he recovered from injury. You know, like I said, he had some chances today against Watford. He was poor against Atletico Madrid, you know, very sloppy in possession. But that was the first poor game he had since he come back from that injury. He's injury prone, Popper, because he's endured quite a few injuries since he re-signed for Man United. Manchester United paid £89 million for Popper, so reflecting on that is our most expensive signing at the moment. You know, this season's been his sixth season at Man United since he re-signed. He's won three trophies at the club so far and he's played over 200 games since he re-signed. We had Popper when he was a lot younger under the Ferguson era, but had to let him go due to limited appearances. Uh, Jones and Bay, I'm expecting them to leave in the summer because they don't really get in the team. Uh, Phil Jones, I think the last game he was involved in was the cup game against Middlesbrough because he came on in that game. He did start in the game against Wolves at Old Trafford earlier on this season. That's only because Maguire picked up an injury. Jones was our best performer against Wolves at Old Trafford. It was his first Premier League appearance since January 2020. Uh, this season has been his 11th season at Man United, so reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. He's been with us since the Ferguson era. His contract at Man United expires next year. Jones had a knee injury at one point for a while. And Eric Bailly, like I said, doesn't really get in the team and he's injury prone, which is a concern, but he is a good centre-back. And I think Man United could look to sell Harry Maguire and Aaron Wan-Bissaka in the summer. So I don't think they're good enough to represent the club. Uh, Bissaka um, started today against Watford. He didn't start against Atletico Madrid, but obviously he came on to replace Lindelof. And uh, Bissaka started last weekend against Leeds. So he's played the last few games as Pesaka. You know, the Law's missed out the last few games. And Dean Henderson, he'll leave Manchester United in the summer because he's our second-choice goalkeeper. doesn't really get in goal because revert back to last summer. The higher reclaim that number one spot back. Henderson's only made three appearances this season. And earlier on this season, Henderson got arrested for assaulting his girlfriend. So there you go. But anyway, revert back to Rangnick. Um, before Manchester United, he was the head of sports and development at Locomotive Moscow. Uh, to Rangnick's credit as well, um, you know, earlier on this season he recommended Ewan Sharpin as an assistant coach and analyst. He also recommended Chris Armisen as an assistant coach and he recommended Saz Chalenzin as a sports psychologist. And he's tried um, different formations as Rangnick since he came in. Obviously started off with the 4 formation, then went 
<clears throat> with the 4-3-3 formation. And now a lot it goes with that 4-2-3-1 formation. <clears throat> but like I say, I've got a lot of respect for Rangnick. I think he is a very good coach. You know, there's been good performances under him, but there's been poor performances as well. Like I've said, he's been totally blameless for the poor performances. The players have had to take responsibility for those poor performances. Uh, earlier on this season, Rangnick said his aim is for Manchester United to finish in the top four this season. But even if he was to finish in the top four this season, that wouldn't be a successful season for Man United. Uh, the only chance Manchester United have got of winning a trophy this season is the Champions League, and I'm very sceptical we'll win that. The last time Manchester United won the Champions League was back in 2008. We've won the Champions League three times. Manchester United have not won a trophy since 2017. That's nowhere near good enough to our standards. Manchester United's next permanent manager, I think, will either be Mauricio Pochettino or Eric Ten Hag. Well, um, you know the news on Mauricio Pochettino. Um, it said yesterday that Mauricio Pochettino rejected Manchester United as he's waiting for Real Madrid. Real Madrid want Pochettino to replace Carlo Ancelotti. Real Madrid are unhappy with Carlo Ancelotti. And uh, Eric Ten Hag, as you all know, Ralph Rangnick and Richard Arnold want Eric Ten Hag to become Manchester United's next permanent manager. And a lot of Manchester United fans would like to see him get recommended in. Graham Potter uh, at one point was on Man United's shortlist. Graham Potter's the Brighton manager and that Luis Enrique has been spoken about. You know, Manchester United are looking for the fifth permanent manager since Ferguson retired. You know, we've sat four permanent managers since Ferguson, even though Man United are not known as a sacking football club. The four permanent managers we've sat since Ferguson, we sat to David Moyes after 10 months, then we sat to Louis van Gaal after two years. Uh, despite his winning the FA Cup under him. Then we sat to Jose Mourinho after two and a half years. Mourinho did enjoy one good season at Man United because he won three trophies in his first season. And uh, last year, Manchester United sat to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer after almost three years in charge. We've brought over 40 players in since Ferguson retired and let me put into the equation, none of this squad is Rangnick, you know, Rangnick is inheriting, you know, players who other managers have brought in. You know, in the last 10 years, Man United have only won four trophies and in the last 10 years, Man United have spent over a billion pounds. We've recruited around 397 million in sales in the last 10 years. Uh, the Glazers, you know, we need to get them out. They've been one of the biggest issues at the club for a long time. The Glazers have owned Manchester United for around 16 and a half years. The Glazers bought Manchester United for 500 million back in 2005. Obviously, um, Richard Arnold is our chief executive. Um, obviously, was at the beginning of this month, he replaced Ed Woodward. It was good news from Man United perspective that Woodward stepped down because, you know, Woodward was one of the biggest issues at the club for a long time. Ed Woodward was at Manchester United for around 17 years. But what we've got to accept is that we're not going to be 
the same team we was under Ferguson. You know, Alex Ferguson was the greatest manager of all time. He brought success to Manchester United. He won 30-odd trophies, including 13 Premier League titles. But Alex Ferguson didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at Man United. Alex Ferguson was at Manchester United for 26 years. So, reflecting on that, he was a long-serving manager. Ferguson retired nearly 10 years ago. And when he retired, he recommended David Moyes. And that's the only mistake Alex Ferguson made. So now, guys, on my next video, I'll be giving you my player ratings from this game. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.